everybody, Chris Brown, Five Star Home Inspections. I'm up on a roof. Beautiful day here in the Carolinas, nice fall weather, can't beat it. Today, we're talking about roofing, the different types of roofing, um, how we inspect roofs, and some of the things that we typically find and what causes things with uh, roofing. Now, obviously there's all kinds of different types you have metal roofing, you have terracotta pipe, you may have slate, you may have shake, they call wood shake. And of course, the most common is your asphalt. Now, there's a couple of different types of asphalt shingles. Um, <clears throat> the, the two basic styles that you're gonna find is uh, the first style is called a three tab. Some people call it a waterline shingle. Now, <clears throat> The second basic type is an architect cut. And how you can tell the difference is when you look at the roof and you look at the shingles on a three tab product, you will see three distinctive lines across each shingle. So when you're looking across the roof, you can see the lines, okay? This is an architect cut roof. Now, architect cut, is a little bit better product but that's how you can tell the difference okay um, a couple of other things about roofing the way that a roof wears is determined by several factors it's not so much rain uh, unless you get you know hailstorms hailstorms will definitely uh, cause damage to your roofing um, wind not so big of an enemy against roofing the biggest enemy against roofing is the sun now also combined with the sun is just pure heat all right so when the roof gets so hot from being out in this blaring sun what happens is is it actually will start to meld the shingles and it will loosen the mineral on those shingles okay so one of the things to understand about shingles is that shingles are not designed to hold water. You're saying, huh? What? Not designed to hold water. No, they're not. Asphalt shingles are designed to shed water. Now, the reason that I say it's designed to shed water, not hold water, is, is that if you were to take this product and put it on a flat surface, that roof would leak like a sieve. Asphalt shingles are not designed to be on a pitch and or some people will call it a roof slope of much less than about three, two and a half. Don't quote me on that, but I think two and a half is about the right number. Now, you're probably asking, well, what is pitch? What is slope? I've got a tape measure here and I've got a level. Now, I put a tape measure mark on here, and this is exactly 12 inches from the end to that tape mark, all right? So, I know you're not gonna be able to see this, but what you can do is, you can put that level on the roof, and you look at your bubble, and you get it fairly close, and you can take this tape measure, and you measure straight down from the tape to the bottom of that level, and this reads about eight, eight and a half. Well, that means in 12 inches of horizontal length, it vertically drops eight inches. That is an eight, 12 pitch roof. Uh, you would do the same thing for a four, 12 pitch, a six, 12 pitch, so on and so forth. Uh, the most common pitches are six, 12, eight, 12. Okay. Asphalt shingles work great on them. Now, um, couple of things with the heat that builds up in a roof this is what it causes it causes two things it causes the shingles to expand and contract laterally okay another thing is what we call uh, generally call eye popping some people may call it buckling well what can happen is is that roofing nails have a big head on them they're about the size of a dime, okay? 
And because of the heat, sometimes what happens is, is that roofing nail will actually start to back up out of the roof sheathing that's underneath it. Not a problem with the roof sheathing. I don't care if you have plywood, OSB, not a problem of the roof sheathing. It's just the natural forces of expansion and contraction that creates this. So what can happen is, is obviously the nails are up here uh, where you can't see them. So the expansion and contraction in the heat makes that nail head rise. It picks that shingle tab up. And then when you're standing down on the ground looking at it, that's what you see is that little cupping right there. Well, that's the nail head is pushing that tab up. Easy fix. Loosen the shingle, uh, raise it up uh, carefully, and you tap the nail head back down, lay the shingle back down, done, okay? Now, obviously these two conditions are conducive to potential roof leaks, but don't always cause roof leaks, okay? Now, one other thing I'm gonna say about roofing, and this happens on a lot of houses, <clears throat> especially with valleys, that's why I'm sitting here in this valley. Um, up north and some other parts of the country where you got a lot of snow, ice, things like that for sustained periods of time, underneath these shingles in the valley, they will install what's called ice and water shield. Well, there's a reason for that is because if you got ice and things like that, snow, it can actually start to creep up and back up underneath the layers of the shingles. And that ice and water shield is the last defense before you start having a leak, okay? Down here in the Carolinas and other parts of the South, um, it's, it's kind of a choice, you know, a lot of roofers put it on, but then some don't. Nothing says that they have to, okay? Um, so when you have leaf debris, tree debris up that's ganged up in the bottom of your valleys okay and i've seen huge piles and if you notice this gutter down here this gutter's got a splash guard on it which keeps the water from splashing over but leaf debris and stuff will get bottomed up in this valley right here well what happens is, is when the water comes up from here and rushes down it needs to stay in the path of this valley if there's something that is in that valley impeding that progress from it getting to the gutter, the water goes whoosh, like this. And if you don't have that ice and water shield up underneath there, that's where you can potentially get leaks, okay? So what you need to do is protect yourself, keep all that debris out of the valleys. That's just standard homeowner maintenance, okay? Because if you don't, then you could have this problem. Okay, let's talk about how we inspect roofs and what we're required to do. I want to make it very clear to everybody watching is that um, there's different regulations in different parts of the country. Here in North Carolina, no home inspector is required to get up on a roof for any reason. Okay, um, that's written in the North Carolina standards of practice. Obviously, there's, there's reasons for that. There's safety um you know other other variables so if i start home inspections I, we make every attempt to try to get on a roof if we can safely all right we don't carry climbing equipment we don't carry special shoes like some of these roofing contractors have and, and, and tools like that but we do make every attempt to get on a roof if we can do it safely now if we can't get on the roof then what we do is is we view the roof from the ground with high powered binoculars. And we can zoom in pretty close, okay? Um, another way to really tell what's going on with a roof is from inside the attic. And as I said before, we'll do a video on that and we'll kind of show you the, uh, the differences there. So hopefully you learned a little bit, kind of some basics about roofing, roofing shingles, what causes the normal things that we see um, you know, better things about maintaining them. Um, thank you for joining us today. We certainly uh, appreciate everything. And be sure to check us out at fivestarhomeinspections.us. Give us a call, 855-500-3744, and have a great day.